Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the derivation of upper triggering point UTP. So upper triggering point and lower triggering point these are the two instances where the input signal is where or when the input signal crosses these two instances, the output signal will be going either high or low respectively. So when input signal crosses the upper threshold point then output goes to logic high nothing but VCC and when the Smith trigger or input signal crosses this lower triggering point then output goes to logic zero or we can say VCE set. Okay, so as these two are the states changing towards up direction or down direction they named it as upper triggering point and as well as lower triggering point. Now, so there is an important derivation on this upper triggering point. Let us consider the input signal applied at this is V1. See here, let us consider this input voltage as V1. V1 is the input voltage applied at this first transistor Q1. And the second transistor Q2 is given with this particular voltage. Whatever the voltage appeared at this point, that is coming towards this base 2 of the transistor B2. Okay. Suppose assume a condition Q1 is in off state as I explained in the previous case. Q1 is in off state and Q2 is in on state. Okay. See in the upper triggering point this is the case we need to assume. Q1 is in off state, Q2 is in on state. If you invert these two like Q1 is in on state and Q2 is in off state, then lower triggering point will come. Okay, this condition you should remember very well. See, for the calculation of for the calculation of upper triggering point, consider Q1 as off Q2 as on. This is the condition you should assume. Now, if you slowly try to give the input signal, what happens? Q1 slowly con comes into conduction. Q1 slowly comes into conduction. Okay. So, at this situation, let us consider the voltage appeared at this base of the transistor as V1 dash from here to ground. This voltage is because of the voltage revision between R1 and R2. Between R1 and R2. So R1 is the resistance which is having the input which is which carries the original input voltage appeared at the collector 1. And this voltage applied to the transistor B2 base 2 that is as divided voltage. That is taken as divided voltage. So apply Thevenin equivalent network at this particular uh, See, because it is open circuited, as the Q1 is open circuited, we don't have any action of this transistor Q1 and there exists only resistance, capacitance and then a transistor like this. Okay, so let us assume some voltage which is coming at the input of this uh, base of uh, this transistor Q2 as V dash. So, apply Thevenin's network at collector Q1 at collector Q1 where collector Q1 is nothing but at the input of you can write it as at the input of Q2 base then V dash is equal to what is V dash V dash is the voltage appeared from base to ground V dash is equal to what is the total voltage actually VCC into R2 by R2 is the resistance that is connected from base to ground. So R2 by R2 plus RC1 plus R1. This is these are the resistors that we have in that same path. Okay, and the input resistance of base RB is equal to R2 parallel RC1 plus R1. So see here R2 parallel RC1 
from here rc1 plus r1 because when you are calculating the resistance in the Thevenin sequent network what happens vcc voltage sources must be grounded so when it is grounded then r2 into r1 plus rc1 which is in parallel connection okay so if you expand this r2 rc1 R2 into RC1 R1 otherwise you can take the LCM RC1 plus R1 and R2 plus RC2 plus R1 RC1 so it is possible for Q2 it is possible for Q2 to be in its active region or to be in saturation okay so q2 may be a chance of being in the active region or it may be in the saturation region assuming that Q2 is in its active region. Okay, so when this particular transistor is in active region, there exists a small current flow IC2 is equal to HFE into IB2. That is equal to IE2. Already I told you IE2 is nothing but IC2 plus IB2. That is equal to so what is IC2, IC2 is HFE into IB2. If you take HFE, IB2 common, HFE plus 1 into IB2. This is called IE2, collector, uh, emitter current from the second transistor. In the circuit, whatever I have explained here, this circuit, to calculate V1, see first we need to calculate here V1. V1 is nothing but in the input voltage source and at a particular point V1, the transistor changing its state, that is called V1. V1 is nothing but upper triggering point or upper threshold point voltage. Okay, so in this circuit, or from the circuit, so to calculate V1, we are what we are doing is, we are replacing all the components like uh, VCC is equal to 0, RC1, R, R1, all these are a part of this network VB dash and as well as RB. So writing the KVL equation, write KVL around the base of Q2 v1 dash minus ib2 rb minus vb2 minus ib2 into hfe plus 1 into re is equal to 0. So if you take ib2 common from all this ib2 is equal to you will be having v dash minus vbe Two divided by HFE plus one RE plus RB RE plus RB. So voltage across emitter resistance is known as VE. VE is the emitter resistance voltage. So emitter resistance voltage. emitter resistance voltage VE see in somewhere sometimes you can also refer it as VEN N is nothing but ground okay VE VEN both are same emitter to ground we are calculating that's why I am not showing emitter to ground 
that is IB2 into HFE plus 1 into RE. So that is equal to already we have just calculated IB2 which is VB dash minus VBE2 into HFE plus 1 HFE plus 1 into RE divided by RB plus RE into 1 plus HFE that is equal to V 1 is equal to VE is equal to VE2. All these are same. The emitters are coupled together and grounded through a resistance R, RE. So if RE into HFE plus 1 is greater than greater than RB. So the drop across RB may be neglected. The drop across RB may be neglected compared to the drop across RB. Compared to the drop across RE. So, how can we write that? V E is equal to V dash minus V B E 2. So, here the input voltage is subtract, uh, subtracted by an amount of cut in voltage of the transistor Q 2 that is nothing but your emitter voltage V E and V 1 is equal to V 1 is nothing but input voltage at a specific point V 1 dash is equal V 1 is equal to V dash minus V B E 2 plus V gamma 1 plus V gamma 1. V gamma 1 is nothing but your cut in voltage of the first transistor. Cut in voltage, actual cut in voltage of the first transistor. Okay. So, since V gamma 1 is the voltage from base to emitter at a cut in, I will write here, since V gamma is the voltage from base to emitter yet cut in where the loop gain just exceeds unity it differs from it differs from VBE2 in active region in the active region by only how much? 0 0.1 volt for either silicon or germanium. Okay, so therefore we can say V1 is equal to V dash minus 0 0.1. So this is the voltage difference between the obtained output voltage and the voltage required for the germanium as well as silicon. So, this is the upper triggering point. Upper triggering point is nothing but VUTP. VUTP we can write it as V dash minus 0 0.1 volt. Okay. So, in the next video, I will explain how to calculate the lower threshold point or lower triggering point. Thank you.